to our latest episode of Film in Minnesota. I am Rohana Power. I'm Alan Tracy. And today we are joined by Blythe Whaley. Blythe, welcome. Yeah, thanks you guys. This is so fun. I know that Alan talked to me a while back about your guys' podcast mm-hmm. and I'm excited to finally be on and be joining yeah. you guys. Yeah. yeah, we're so excited to have you. Um, we're going to jump right in with our non-film question. Uh, what is a fun, random, interesting talent that you have that others may or may not know about? <laughs> it's always interesting. Okay, so when I, <laughs> when I think about it, I'm like, oh, I'm nothing too crazy. But I did memorize 50 digits of pi for some reason. So wow. 3.14159265358979323846264338. Oh no, hold on. Sorry, I messed it up. But it's okay. We won't go back. We won't go back. But I did mess up there. So we could have kept going a little longer. I would have never known. (laughs) So random. I I think it's funny. That's incredible. I know 3.14159. That's about where I get off. I know. That's all you need, really. You lost me after four. (laughs) So. No, I always joke because I so it was like really random. I was sick one day and I was just like kind of, I guess, bored when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And for some reason it stuck. So you're just like, yeah, is that still in my head? I have no idea. Yep. But, you know, it's just kind of the random one. One pie day comes around. I'm like, ooh, this is useful. Right. That's about it. (laughs) Like you guys, hold up. (laughs) 2015 was the year, wasn't it, for you? (laughs) Okay. That's so funny. Yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. Awesome. Okay. So. Let's jump into film. Love You're an it, actress. Yes. True. That's true. That's why we're here. <laughs> okay. All right. And that was a great... No, um, yeah. So how, why? Like what, yeah. what caused you to decide that that was the life you wanted to jump into yeah it's always a fun question too because I mean when you think about passions and like where do those lie and I think it's funny because obviously you think about how many people in today's society that don't try to live out that passion they have it or maybe they found it but it's like Mm -hmm. what does that look like and I would say even like that was myself like earlier on in my life like being like okay like I know I'm passionate about this but like what does that mean to like actually live it Mm -hmm. and so for me I guess life I mean comes into play and it really hit me over the head I would say especially um, when my grandparents passed away Mm -hmm. and so for me it was just like wow like life is so short what am I doing how can I make this a number one priority to make sure that this happens in my lifetime and so for me I guess you see how many people um, that have really taken the reins on their career and have had such great success and so of of course trying to follow in their footsteps and seeing what that looks like for me but definitely I'm the passion of just like escapism is Mm -hmm. something that I don't know if you guys have heard that word it's like a random Mm -hmm. term but Katy Perry mentioned it once and it just like hit me of like that's that's one of the reasons because you think about everything you go into in like life today Mm -hmm. and there's definitely those hard moments in your life and especially like I said for my grandparents they were like my second set of parents how close I was with them and so during that time I would say like film and movies and TV shows kind of help me get out of that. Yeah. And you just see how important it is kind of when you're going through some of those things of like, wow, what does it look like to laugh when you're really, you know what I mean? When you're right. really sad or need that laugh or yeah. whatever that looks like in film to kind of get you out of it. But yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I don't know. A lot of things, but we could go on for that forever, but we don't have to, <laughs> but definitely that's one of the, the reasons. Absolutely. So how did you get started? Yeah, I think it's so funny. I mean, my whole life, I guess, I mean, one of my first things, of course, was uh, modeling for a playground mm. magazine. And I think it's <laughs> funny to like think back on that day of like little Blythe being like, OK, yeah. here I am. Like, what does that look like to kind of start jumping into um, the entertainment industry? Mm-hmm. And I know we even talked about this before jumping on the mic. But of course, like besides acting, like broadcasting, like, there's so many different areas yeah. of this industry that are awesome and I love and so it's fun to just kind of see the evolution of that what does that look like to kind of be around a lot of different areas yeah that's awesome well um what are like when you were maybe growing up I don't know what what film did it for you was there a specific film or was it several films that you really enjoyed or so definitely enjoy so many films. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that, that's great. True. No, no, good yeah. start. <laughs> um, I mean, just some things I like, got the top of my head that hit me when you're saying that. Um, I really enjoyed the game with Michael Douglas. Oh, I just, yeah. I really like ones that kind of mess with your mind a little bit. Yeah. You have to think a lot more about it. And so the game was one of those movies that I'll continually go back to. Um, but of course, when I was just talking about kind of even when my grandparents were sick and different mm-hmm. things. 
um la la land was one oh. that my family saw a million times i'm not even kidding. Yeah. like in theaters i don't even want to say how many times we saw that movie <laughs> but because it was one of those that you could just kind of go back to and mm-hmm. just even not everyone would agree with the lightness of that movie but the palm trees and everything when we're thinking of how cold it is outside yeah. here just definitely some of those films that you're like wow that was so well done mm-hmm. and the game in la la land would probably be the first two that come to mind at the oh, moment right. yeah <laughs> So do your favorite films kind of inspire what you pursue as an actress as well, do you think? Like genre wise or or how you the process of your building your characters at all, do you think? Yeah, I mean when you're thinking about what roles that you want to play or different things as an actress, I think it's interesting. I mean, the more and more you get into it. I hope I get to be in a film that's like the game. You know, mm-hmm. that is one that is going to mess with your mind. There's not one that comes to mind that I've been in currently right. that I'm like, wow, that did that same thing or like that same type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited for that day to come and be like, wow, yeah. like, that was a really cool moment because obviously you think about how many people here in the cities are even creating their own stories to kind of get mm-hmm. some of those passions out on paper or have you know someone help them write something yeah. that's related to that and so I'm curious if you know I'll take some of those thoughts or those films mm-hmm. to somebody and be like hey how can we make this happen or maybe a casting will come across that I am like really excited about because obviously when you're in this career you don't say yes to every project right and so it's like what does that look like to find those ones that you really are excited about and those would definitely if that came across i'd be like okay <laughs> we need to make this happen how does it how is it gonna happen absolutely so that's like your dream your dream film to be part of mm, that's tough gosh there's so many you know like yeah. it's so funny like when you when i think about it it's like okay yeah like i really like the ones that like make people think and uh maybe it you know has that turn in it of course mm-hmm. there's a lot of filmmakers they'll talk about that a ton of trying to create something like that that people aren't predicting and mm-hmm. i think right now you know how long film has been there. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many stories that have been told. And so how oh, can yeah. you have that X factor of something that people haven't seen or thought mm-hmm. about? Yeah, no kidding. I, I mean, that's probably why so many, there's all those sequels and remakes and all this kind of stuff because, I mean, it's tough to get, I mean, scary one to like maybe get your own story out there. But then on top of that, like having people be interested in bringing in these new these new projects have you ever thought about writing yeah I have it's so funny because okay I say funny a lot because it is like I laugh about (laughs) myself all the time Mm -hmm. but because I just enjoy this industry so much Mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see what that looked like for me to really dive into one of these ideas I have ideas that come across my head all the time Mm -hmm. I'm like wow what would this look like if I made this happen um, or at least, you know, had that first draft <laughs> for someone else to make it yeah. a better, yeah. way better than it could be when, <laughs> you know, they're experts in that area. And so I've certainly been thinking about that a lot more recently mm-hmm. of what does that look like if I have something that I really want to do or be a part of, but, you know, it's not out there. How can I make that happen? And so, yeah, writing has certainly been on my mind. We'll see what happens. You know, maybe this is just that beginning of we mm-hmm. say this now and we come back, you know, in a little while later. Hopefully, you know, if you guys have me back on in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that. Um, what what got you started in acting? Like, what was your first film, maybe, or play? I don't know. So. Yeah. I mean, gosh, it's so funny. I think about this, too, recently. Sorry, a little tangent will come back. Um, just some of those, like, obviously, shorts and different things. When you think about just how quickly you get to see your end result, you're like, wow. Okay, mm-hmm. so we just did this, and whether it's, like, a 48, and you got to see that film so quickly Mm -hmm. I just did a film and you know of course it's like over a year ago and people are asking me questions about and you're like gosh like trying to remember like they're like okay how many days was set and you're like oh I don't remember (laughs) like that was so long ago so it's funny when you try to like think back on like wow like where is my career and that's Mm -hmm. something too like I love taking photos it's all be in my phone and I'll like dig 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 like through photos and just be like wow like it's exciting and I encourage everyone whoever's listening to this you know because um, it's encouraging for yourself too to look back and be like, wow, like what did I do in the past year? Cause you forget, mm-hmm. like you really do. Yeah. And so for me, like I constantly am trying to be like, okay, like, wow, like I have done a lot. Like sometimes you won't really understand like what you've accomplished. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, like it's a fun trip down memory lane. I mean, of course people who aren't taking photos, hopefully maybe people have tagged you and stuff on Facebook or yeah. something you can look back on your career and be like, wow, like this is what we've all accomplished in this time. Mm-hmm. Cause I think today's age, I mean, stuff's everywhere. 
yeah. Instagram. You yeah. guys have Instagram. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what's your favorite role that you've done? My favorite role? Hmm. Hmm. That's a great question. Like I said, I'm trying to think of one that more so like mm-hmm. dug down deep like for who for me like who I am right I guess I don't know I think it's interesting when I've never held a gun in my real life mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's fun to think about different films when I have or like more action packed like that mm-hmm. because it's something that like is so not my character however if somebody wants to take me to a gun range I mean it could be fun I could enjoy <laughs> that but I've never mm-hmm. done it outside of mm-hmm. acting and so certain things like that when I think about things and different skills that I've been able to do because of acting yeah. that you get to be a part of and experience. It's mm-hmm. so neat to think about kind of those those settings that you get to be in that you're like, wow, I've never done. I mean, one of them was like, I got to pretend that I was married. Of course, I'm not married <laughs> at all. Mm-hmm. And so it was funny to think about, wow, I'm wearing a wedding dress going through kind of what that would look like. And you're like, you know, I would huh. never have been at this point without mm-hmm. that film, you know? Getting to like live that life. Um, what's the, what role do you think is most opposite of who you are as a person that you've, you've been able to, to do so far? <laughs> um, most opposite. Hmm. Gosh, you're going to stump me on this. <laughs> most opposite. Like I said, I feel like there's so many like sides to my personality that I'm, cause I'm mm-hmm. like an adventure. Like I'm going to jump and dr- like, I love to do like everything. Yeah. And so it's funny when you think about like different characters and you're like, okay, well they do this. Well, it's like, well, it's not completely out of the question. Like I probably would do that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's some, in some part of my life mm-hmm. in some fraction of it. Um, mm, we should come back. Let me think. Okay. <laughs> like, What's your favorite genre to, to ooh, be in? So interesting. I mean, some of the, even when I think about, um, different sitcoms like Seinfeld and Frasier like different mm-hmm. things that like I really love so comedy is certainly one that I'm like wow like it's so fun when you think about just of course making people laugh I I would say that I was a pretty straight arrow in school when I think about my younger days mm-hmm. but I would say the certainly like I love making people laugh and so you know that could be maybe my one area where I'm like wow yep definitely in school hey Blythe stop talking what are you doing (laughs) but it was because I love making people laugh and so for me like that's always fun when I get to dabble in that one of my Mm -hmm. um, films that's coming up actually is going to be a comedy so I'm excited for that one here Um, in a couple weeks we'll start shooting so yeah it should be fun that's exciting are you able to to tell us anything about that one yet or Mm, um I'm not sure. I don't know. Not sure. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it's a comedy. Right. Um, it's shot That's here okay. in cities. But yeah. yeah. There, some things get kept under wraps for a yeah. while, so we don't want to push. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short film? That or? one is, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Feature one um, is also another one that I'm getting ready for. It's it's going to be Ooh. fun. So I play the younger version of the lead character, and it's, it's interesting because it like splits on her life. Huh. And so the beginning of that film um, will be kind of like how I got to where that character is so it's oh. gonna be oh, really cool. neat um but intensive mm-hmm. script but yeah so that one's a feature so that'll be fun and you guys are starting shooting on that soon or have you already i'm um, in a couple months yep so we'll dive into the script and kind of get mm-hmm. more into that here so i'm excited yeah this should be fun. <laughs> have you seen uh vox lux at all Ooh, mm, mm. natalie portman, natalie portman. Yeah. that looked good gotta write it down mm. yeah yeah it's cur- currently on hulu but um yeah, that was interesting because it kind of did the same thing. Really? Yeah, that's exciting. Maybe I should before I, before I start shooting. Yeah, see what happened in there. Give you some ideas. Yeah. yeah, or maybe I shouldn't. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't want to. <laughs> right. Till right. After. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Till after and be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> what I did and what they did. Right. Yeah. right. No, that's fine. Yeah, there are probably you know a lot of different films that are the same, kind of mm-hmm. similar at least. Mm-hmm. Um, do you do you find that you're drawn more to or, or maybe it's just what's available. Is it more like drama or is it yeah, horror? Yeah, I think there is, is a s- lot of drama. There definitely is a lot of horror mm-hmm. uh-huh. where we're at right yeah. now. And so I certainly see myself in a lot of those. And I would say like really grateful for all those opportunities because of course like it gets to kind of bring, I try, you know, in my in my real life, try to stay far away from drama. <laughs> and so, so it's fun. fun when you kind of get to be in the middle of it yeah. and seeing kind of what you don't want sometimes in your yeah. life. You're like, okay, this was a bad thing that my character is <laughs> doing. I hope I never do that. <laughs> so uh, yeah no I would say there's a lot of that here mm-hmm. and uh, like I said I've enjoyed being a part of it it's certainly something that 
is, you know, like I said, kind of hopefully I would say out of my mm-hmm. my personal character. <laughs> right. Can you talk about some of your past films? Like what? Yeah. yeah. What are some of those? Yeah. So for me, I mean, gosh, see, putting me on the spot. I'm um, <laughs> past films. Yeah. I mean, so a day at the diner. I'm um, Kung Fu Canoe fallen father i feel and that's all like again when we talk about horror like again we're kind of getting in the nitty-gritty with that there too um and i think like it's so interesting and so one that was just shot in duluth caught looking was really fun just even for kind of the look of it i mean part of the scene was shot by lake superior there and it was so beautiful and i mean it was funny because we're looking back at the footage and i mean it was shot so well it almost looked like it was a green screen behind me. Like it just right. looks wow. too perfect. Yeah. I'm like, wow, like this is amazing. Like you want to take those moments in and you're like, you know, just when you have like a beautiful scenery or set that you're on. Mm-hmm. And certainly for me, I love being outdoors. And yeah. so like some of those scenes you're like, wow, like that was really cool. And you know, I don't know, definitely an outdoorsy person. So when it gets cold, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Get all the layers out. Yeah. Um, I, Day at the Diner, is that the one, who directed that? Do you remember? That was Nathan. Oh, yeah, Nathan, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the one with, you said Canoe, what was it? Um, Kung Fu Canoe. Kung yeah, Fu that canoe. one. Yeah, so that one was a, um, a comedy, but it was an action comedy, so that one was interesting. It was um, one of those where you're, where it's like having those two things together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly is like, wow, like that's not probably, you know, done all the time. And so it was fun to be a part of that and I feel like for me too when I think about it it's like really when you get to do even just like action sequences and you know you have the stunt coordinator and you're like okay like what does this look like I mean on set somebody did actually end up getting punched in the face not by me don't worry not by me (laughs) I won't disclose who it was either I won't throw him under the bus but it was pretty funny like when you think about it and like how important that is for when you're making those action films that everyone stays safe Mm -hmm. (laughs) no no one gets hurt right absolutely um, have you had much work with, uh, stunts like that? Like you say, um, what, what type of stunt work have you done? Maybe types. Yeah. I'm, I, so I haven't done a whole lot, but the ones that like I have, like I said, in that one, like I definitely did. And so it's fun. And I mean, in mercenary kingdom as well, oh. um, there was some stunts in there and that was, that was pretty fun as well. I um, got to take down one of the one of the bad guys in that one so it was it was fun to get to see kind of what that looks like to go through a few different things but certainly like I said grateful to have those people on set Mm -hmm. because you know you need all the help you can and so they know way more and so being able to kind of go through some of those things of hey this is what it's going to look like especially when you're shooting for on camera this is how far you need to go you don't need to go any further um to keep everyone safe so yeah so how do you go about the process of like building and and keeping your skill honed like yeah. do you take classes or you do you that, have yeah. like some other process that you go through yeah no I'm really glad you brought this up because so currently I mean that's like even more so it's been on my mind mm-hmm. and I'm like okay like how can we continue to hone these skills and so taking a lot of classes at the Guthrie recently I mean obviously so well known mm-hmm. and just some great teachers there and I like I said, I mean, I'll stay grateful till the day I'm dead. Cause like just so grateful for some of those people, you know, who come behind you and you're like, okay, like whether they're supporting you and encouraging you. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, like every one of us in the industry, you know, you, you feel like you have, you have something that you want to share and you want to give, but you're like, okay, like, is this right? Like, do people see what I feel like, you know what I feel? And so when you do have, whether it's like a coach or a teacher that is, really helping you and they do see that and they're trying to help promote like Mm -hmm. hey like you can do this like keep it going and so it's fun to see some of those skills that they've had in the industry for years and years and so yeah I've really enjoyed my time at the Guthrie here recently yeah that's awesome how long have you been acting here in the cities yeah like I said I mean that question it's like gosh like you go back and you're (laughs) like okay like when you know when you're trying to think of like specific versus like okay, like how long have I been like taking it seriously? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like taking it seriously here for the last few years. And you're like, okay, but that means like, I've actually been like, this is my, my main, like, it's like I said. So of course, I mean, like, so for me, my full time is acting and broadcasting. And so that has been a joy and a pleasure. Cause so before, like, of course, like, I mean, I had the main, the main gigs. And so like, how could I get it all to be in the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. And so that has been a huge accomplishment, I guess, for myself here recently to be like, okay, like, we're making we're making moves and how do you make this um 
and not have the nine to five, which I mean, I, right. every, you need it, you know, like you have to make money in some yeah. way. And so definitely grateful that i um, I have a passion in broadcasting that that can help as well and kind of fill some of those gaps when you're like in between films and different things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for me, it's been fun to see kind of the back and forth between some of those those gigs everyone you know the gig the word gig if yeah like, well, <laughs> everyone outside of the industry that will talk to me they're like yeah Blythe, like what are you up to i'm like okay let me look at the calendar <laughs> when's that <laughs> thing like schedule wise you're always kind of looking mm-hmm. all over the place over. which is fun yeah. wow. and most people who know me too like i mean even before you know the the further craziness you know which is the exciting time when you're yeah. like looking at you're like i don't even know like well, everything is like kind of all over the place but people would just say that was kind of my personality because i'm always like i love doing like want to be involved in this and be involved in that and so mm-hmm. i'm they're just they've known my schedule to be like that i yeah. feel like the people who know me best are like okay makes sense that that's what you do absolutely so you do broadcasting full-time do you find that one helps the other whether it's acting helps your broadcast career or broadcasting helps your acting career. Yeah, I mean, so both sides are, of course, like in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And so different things like that too. Um, For me, I mean, just you become so comfortable in front of a camera. You're like, okay, I mean, like it's not, it doesn't even seem like it's there sometimes. But of course with broadcasting, I mean, you're talking at it. Yeah. (laughs) So you can't do that unless it's asked for in film. But certainly I think there's a lot of people when you even think of the cities that go back and forth, like on the crew side. So you see so many people that like you've seen, um, whether it's like shooting for something on the broadcasting side, so like sports broadcasting. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I'll see some people on those sets and then like all of a sudden be on a film and like super excited reunion almost to see some of those people yeah. working for that film. And so that's been really fun for me to kind of see, you know, when you think about how small the world is, sometimes you're yeah. like, okay, like you're running into some of these people who are, you know, making that, that gig work all over the place. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about, have you ever <laughs> thought about, um, doing this outside of the twin cities like yeah. moving to LA or like New York a bigger market um, yeah. or do you do it specifically here for reasons yeah like, so I would say for the longest time the twin cities like I said I mean there's so many great um, filmmakers and different things here mm-hmm. and excited about that as well and I would say one of the things so I told you how close I was with my family yeah. so my grandparents was one of the main reasons that kept me here. Mm-hmm. I know I talk about the cold in that park and be like, ah, let me get <laughs> out of here. Um, but no, I like I said, I love the Twin Cities, but I would say for the longest time, my grandparents were like one of the main reasons I love being close with them. Because I mm-hmm. mean, with this industry and you think about how easy it is to submit auditions online nowadays, which has been, yeah. you know, obviously that's so cool when you think about it. And to be able to be like, okay, like here's this project. It's nowhere near where I am, but like you can still be in the mix. Mm-hmm. And so that is something that it's cool to see how how small the world can get when we have technology like we do yep. and so yeah being able to submit for projects and different things like outside while still being here you know you can mm-hmm. go wherever we have airplanes we yeah. can make it work you know wherever it's going to happen so yeah it's but definitely you think about the twin cities and of course it's like where i grew up and you're like like it's such a nice place in the summer especially i'll yeah. talk about the lakes and everyone will but yeah i'm a huge beach goer whether it's the ocean or the lake i'll be there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, but for you guys so first I mean I know we talked about broadcasting too but yeah. I think it's exciting I know you guys you know now like well over a year so mm-hmm. that's exciting to yeah. for you guys getting to do this and talk with so many awesome people and it's been fun to tune in and listen because things like this I think it's neat because I listen to a lot of different podcasts you know and I mm-hmm. think it's fun when you think about like our industry and you're like yeah. okay like yeah. getting to hear from people you know whether it's even people that you've worked with like there's been people right. on your show of course that like I've worked with and it's just fun to hear even more of their story because mm-hmm. you don't always have the time if you think about it when you're on set and everything's kind of going back and forth or you know you're looking at your lines you know again just before you're going to go on and so it's fun to get to kind of hear some some further details about people so thanks you guys for doing this yeah. i just want to make sure i said that at some point because oh, thank grateful. you yeah Aww. yeah yeah we definitely love doing it yeah it's I a lot of tell. fun. You yeah. can tell. Yeah. getting to like meet these new people and like there are so many creatives here in the cities it's it's incredible so it's a it's a great opportunity right yeah. so flies yeah <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your, maybe your upbringing, uh, like what, what kind of put you on this trajectory, you know, what was that, you know, thing more so, or how, how did you grow up? Was it, were you surrounded by arts a lot or was it not more background to you or what? Yeah. I, I would say my family, it's so, it's crazy, but 
So with everything I feel like I've done, it's almost like complete opposite. My family would say, you know, nothing around necessarily arts. My sister is super artistic in the sense that she like draws a lot mm-hmm. and like she's a really good singer. And so she's been around the arts, I would say, probably one of those people that that is in my family. But I'm trying to even think of other people who are my uncle acted for a little while in his life. And so oh, that cool. was pretty cool, too. But I think it's funny because even so I played a bunch of sports. So I played basketball, soccer, ran track. And I think it's crazy when I think about it too because my family was not athletic either mm-hmm. like it's yeah. nobody in my family so my uncle actually is into sports like he played sports mm-hmm. but and he also was into acting so it's funny so like we relate on some of those levels but I would say my family definitely been supportive of what I've wanted to do and but definitely not necessarily the driving force I didn't see my parents doing things in the mm-hmm. arts and so it's been fun to kind of get to adventure that and have their support but certainly not always their help they definitely give me advice on certain things just life advice you think about like people obviously have advice in a lot of areas but they wouldn't be that main go-to source that would know the industry Mm -hmm. more so it's been funny in that way (laughs) do you think your uncle being into acting and sports and stuff do you think that even just like maybe behind the scenes subconsciously like led to that curiosity in your head and like brought those passions forth I wish I could say yes. (laughs) No, um, I think it's so interesting because how much I, I guess I even learned about that Mm -hmm. as I was diving into those areas that I feel like it came out. Like, I mean, like I, I'm sure I heard about it, but I feel like I don't know if it overly stuck Mm -hmm. until I was really pursuing it. And then it's like, oh, you know, like you hear more stories about that stuff. And so I would say, I mean, sports started when I was in kindergarten. So I don't think I really could have picked up on it. It was like, wow, like this is exciting. I love doing it. And I mean, for acting too, I just think about how many stories I've heard about my uncle being in, you know, I've have been in that industry because I was in it and now hearing more about his story too. So yeah, I, I, like I said, I wish I could say, I wish there was a cooler story (laughs) that, (laughs) that could go that way, but no, I feel like it's, it's been neat when you think about some of those ingrained passions that are Mm -hmm. really in you. And I think sometimes you're born with that yeah. stuff. And I feel like for me, it's just kind of been a part of who I was. And it, I feel like I would have found it regardless that passion. Yeah. Somehow it came out. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that makes sense. So how did you learn to, you know, do the art of acting? Like what, what, what was it? What, how, how are you learning or is it just self-taught along the way or what? Yeah, I've had some great coaches. And I think, like I said, I mean, it's, it's so interesting when you think about just the importance of, coaches and people who have been doing it for so long I mean Mm -hmm. you can you can only get so far when you're just like okay like how can I learn or do this I mean we're lucky again in this day and age I mean you can watch so many things on acting and different things of course but to have that feedback I mean it's so important and so to have somebody see exactly what you're doing acting and get to kind of tweak some of those things or even like ask whether those questions my favorite question is always just like the motivation piece Mm -hmm. like when you're saying something in so many classes you know I'm acting coaches being like okay like what's your motivation behind what you just said? Because of course, like that's going to come across on screen if you don't fully connect that character. And so I I love hearing that question, whether it's um, directed at myself or when we're watching different people in class, you know, sometimes Mm -hmm. too, when you get to see, oh yeah, like I could tell that they weren't connected there, Mm -hmm. but But now getting to hear them say it too, being like, oh yeah, like I wasn't, but let me, you know, reconnect and try that again. Yeah. And you see the difference. It's so cool. Absolutely. Have you had experience with theater at all? Yeah, very, very little. I would say like <laughs> hardly any. Um, for me, it's always been film. Like I've mm-hmm. always just been so engrossed in that side that I could see, you know, who knows? Like I said, I'm somebody who I really love all aspects of entertainment that I don't see it being like so crazy to be like, oh, like maybe the more I dabble that I could be like, wow, like maybe I really enjoy this even more. But mm-hmm. I right now, like I... I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like film has just always kind of been that that for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, with broadcasting, kind of going back and forth, just like yeah. the camera, like there's just something special about kind of what you can tell through those mediums mm-hmm. that I've really enjoyed. And I feel like, you know, just the up close, even in person, like personable, personal, uh, whatever word, I don't know what I'm trying to say, um, but just how different things you can show by showing those like small details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there another role other, we already kind of touched on writing potentially, but is there another role like on a film set that you've had curiosity about or thought maybe someday like I would like to give that a shot or move into that? Yeah, so I would say 
directing maybe mm -hmm. i'm definitely like i said it's not something that i'm like wow like this is my life mission right but i could see myself going on that side and i mean we see so many actors nowadays that do that mm -hmm. and i feel like you think about when you've been on so many sets like they have especially you know what i mean these these really well-known actors that will go into directing yeah. and it's i feel like because you've been around it so much you start to have even more of those things that you want to see out and you yeah. want to have more control over what does that look like what does that right. end result look like and so i could see that i mean i i feel like there's nothing that's like rushing me to being like okay like i for sure want to direct something tomorrow mm -hmm. but i could see myself like being further in this industry um down the road and being like yeah i for sure want to have a film that i've fully crafted and put out into the universe because mm -hmm. i think it's it's special and i mean i appreciate all the directors out there that that do that for us you know right. because it is a lot of work <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah i know yeah, yeah, yeah true we're talking we're talking <laughs> someone who knows you know. quite well knows. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well um i know that uh with minnesota at least uh, there's constant film seasons you have z fest you mm -hmm. have 48 you have you know the twin cities film fest and um even the International Film Festival, too. Uh, do you uh, get a lot of participants? I've seen you in quite a few, actually. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember the basketball one yeah. from, I think it was last year, wasn't it? See, no, I love it. Like, see, I love when people bring yeah. up different films because I'll be like, yes. Because, like, when you were asking about <laughs> films earlier, I'm like, films, hmm, which? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, so on the line, yep, I was in that basketball film, and that was super fun, like I said, when you collide sports with yeah i'm you know the film industry that's always for me i'm like wow like this is super fun like and that another passion of mine and so yeah definitely for film festivals you can finish that thought i do have a yeah. question keep going yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> um did they tell you to purposely miss the basket each time like that like yeah it was like painful to watch i was like <laughs> what <laughs> yes no i think it's funny too because in different things, I mean, just the character of like what she was going through, yeah. it was like, okay, how do we show even just the frustration and just like, what does that coach mean to her? Hmm. And so like trying to like build that. Um, but yeah, certainly, I mean, just even being a basketball player, you never want to miss. So I mean, <laughs> it's like, okay, you want me to miss? Here we go. Here we go. But yeah, I think, I mean, some of that stuff, like I said, like we said, I mean, not everything um, is decided upon um by like when you get to be you know you have a script and you have different things that you're going by but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it was certainly a blast to do that film and i just remember it was like in the middle of like a snowstorm too and like trying to figure oh, out like wow. getting there so the gym it was crazy trying for that location like it was crazy to get in there with the snowstorm and i uh, making sure like everyone and like all the equipment and like stuff got mm -hmm. into the gym when it was like crazy outside but like i said it was a very fun um team to work with for that one but certainly for just different festivals when you think about it so like that that year you're talking about last year i'm super grateful to be i was in four films for z fest and it was so oh, wow. fun i'm um, to think about just the variety because there was yeah. so much variety mm -hmm. <laughs> that i got to be a part of and when you think about that as an actress it's definitely something that you're like wow like looking back like that was a really neat part of that festival to get to be there like even so my family of course was there too and like I said super supportive and grateful for what they've done for me and just kind of along the way but for them to get to see kind of a range of different characters that that I played in that festival but so many great festivals here like you said in the cities mm -hmm. yeah have you so you've done Z Fest have you also mm -hmm. done like 48 yeah yep so that was pretty fun and I feel like for me too when you think about like I said the 40 it's just crazy it's so mm -hmm. crazy but it's so fun and I mean everyone's in it together like you have to be otherwise yeah. it's not going to succeed and so for me yeah the 48 is certainly one that I mean again it's kind of goes to the crazy lifestyle of like wow like you're in this and again how quickly you get that end result yeah it's so cool I mean for me I would say just again it's such a different festival of course sometimes it's like how can you try to create the best film possible? But it's always tough. You know, you go back and forth. You're like, okay, everyone has this time constraint. Everyone has all those elements and yeah. different mm -hmm. things. Um, another one too, like I enjoy, like the 50-50 is fun too. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. so. And yep. super grateful, I mean, for that festival. i um, been nominated for Best Actress a few times. And so like oh, cool. thankful for um, the people who are judging these different festivals too of like when they're going through films. And mm -hmm. I mean, it means so much, like just even to be nominated amongst, you know, I mean, how many yeah. great... Um, actresses and so for me too when you think about your career again it's like those people who 
have like believed in you or like put you kind of in a position. And so super grateful for Mm -hmm. some of those things that you're like thinking about, like in your life, you're like, okay, like that was so awesome just to even be considered, you know? Right. Yeah. Cause, uh, these competition festivals are like really, um, cause other towns that they obviously have 48 for, for some of them, but they don't have 50, 50, they don't Mm -hmm. have the Z fest, you know, it's, it's kind of unique to us in that way. I'm, I'm sure they may have something, but I haven't heard. But not, I don't yeah. know. You know, like when you think about other states that might have good film incentives, they might have like TV and such, like New Mexico, for instance, or Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever worked in a larger market outside of Minnesota like that? or And if so, what were your experiences compare and contrast with here? Yeah, so I worked with an LA film company and it's funny when you think about the differences. I mean, some of the things obviously are completely the same and you're like, okay, this mm-hmm. is generic, you're on set, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but everyone has their own way of doing things and so it's it's crazy to think, okay, is that difference because of where they are located or just there's so many teams that have just different ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. And so when you think about here in the cities, I mean, it's been great to work with some of those teams. You know, you have those repeat companies that you work with and how awesome that is. I mean, that is always something that like I'll take to heart because when someone has worked with you, they've seen your acting talent, they've seen your personality and they didn't want to kick you off set. (laughs) You know what I mean? You like think about that. It's like, wow, that means a lot to be asked back for a different film because they've seen everything. They know you. Mm -hmm. Um, They're not just like, okay, taking that chance. And so it's like, okay, they've seen everything and now they're still wanting you to come back. And Mm -hmm. so for me, like that's been neat, like about the cities and different companies that I've been able to work with a few times. And so um, but yeah, like outside of the cities, I'm trying to think of something. If there's something specific that I want to be like, oh, like this happened. Yeah. <laughs> that was so different. Um, but I, like I said, everyone just has their own way of doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even when you think about actors and actresses, we all kind of have our own way of doing stuff too. Like when you think about like memorizing lines or like what it feels like mm-hmm. to get ready, like what do you need to go through to kind of get in that mm-hmm. mental space? And I think everyone kind of has their own, their own way, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we all come together and make yeah. it happen. What's your process? Like yeah, what to is, get in that mindset yeah. and like in the zone for your character, ready to go, like you've got your lines and now like you're centering yourself. Like mm-hmm. how do you do that? Yeah, and it's definitely I sometimes need that moment to myself to be like, okay, I need to step away. What does this look like to fully not have those distractions? Because I mean, if you're trying to do that in a space where it's not really able to focus on mm-hmm. just that so sometimes it's neat to like have that space before you're going to go into a setting where you're going to have to obviously perform and be that and I think for me I would say that's like one of my biggest things is like how can I maybe I have like a few seconds i mm-hmm. um, when you're on set like you have that but I mean when you don't have that time like sometimes you don't you know yeah. there's different corrections on set you're in the middle of a scene and it's like okay we want you to do it this way like we're going to change this up like what does that look like so of course you don't have that but of course you're grounded still in who that character was you had mm-hmm. that moment before you're doing that I don't know I I would say that's probably one of my biggest ones is if you know if I could have that that moment but I think too when you think about kind of of course we talk about creating the backstory a ton and so everything that you're not given <laughs> as an actress yeah. you're like okay how have I filled in these blanks how have I really become that character mm-hmm. that I'm not really thinking about oh, what would they do? I already have had those scenarios kind of play out in my head yeah. and know what they would have done if this happened to them right before I stepped yeah. into this circumstance. Mm-hmm. And so that's always fun for me too, of thinking about what would that character, what would have happened to them? And mm-hmm. so I enjoy kind of creating those those stories or different things that people don't always get to know about that happened right. to me right yeah. before that scene. So that would kind of almost be an interesting thing to go into, you know, when you think about films, it's like, what happened to you right before you did this? <laughs> what did what what did you do? It's like, yeah. oh, okay, let me think. <laughs> this is what I did. Like a play by play from sports, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. When you caught I the ball that. that one time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, huh? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> so that's interesting because um yeah, I know it hmm, there can be very little turn turnaround time between well takes and then you're getting a new direction maybe and you have to adapt pretty quickly um i i i I know that must be really challenging (laughs) um love the challenge though it's always fun because like especially when you come out of that Mm -hmm. and like you created Mm -hmm. something because of course like at the end of the day you're gonna have created something (laughs) right and you know and so for me too when you look back on some of those moments that maybe were more challenging you're like okay like definitely 
they spun that direction didn't know that coming into this mm -hmm. but now hey we get to look at that film and what did we create it's like okay we, we still made an awesome film and you know that correction whether it was you know necessary to be like okay that really changed the trajectory of what that film was going to be if we played it the other way mm -hmm. right absolutely so tangent <laughs> um love it yes love these are there actresses that you maybe look up to like you watch a film of theirs and you're like okay like you get your ideas from them and their process or you just think man i would love to be able to work like her or work with her someday like that kind of a thing like these these role model women in yeah. film yeah there's so many i mean when you try yeah. to like dive into that you're like okay like there's so many mm -hmm. and i feel like it's it's interesting too because some of them of course like i mean when you're talking when we're talking about it we're like okay like is there an actress and like sometimes it's not always just like an actress because like mm -hmm. there's certain ways of people doing st like stuff that i'm like wow like this guy yeah. like is somebody that you know i'm looking up to right and so for me like even when i think about just the story you know i'm um, of john i'm um, from the office it's so fun oh, when you yeah. when we talk about him too because like his story of like he didn't make it on the office yet and he's just about to give up and like i've heard so many podcasts about him and so it's interesting too to like think about he was just on that brink of like mm -hmm. okay like bent to so many auditions like you know out of money like all these different scenarios that were going against him but really that you know just a few days later after his mom's like you know maybe you should just stay out there a little longer yeah. and then like boom the office and now of course everyone knows him yeah and he's so great and has been in so many different films um but of course i mean you think about like fatal attraction with glenn mm -hmm. and i think just how universal like she's so great at so many different characters yeah. so i mean we could go on and on about her forever <laughs> absolutely and um i mean even of course i know i talked about la, la land like with emma mm -hmm. stone and i think yeah. it's neat to see her you know she's in La La Land, you know, playing that character, but then you see her in like Zombie Land or something yeah. like that. And it's like, okay, what does that look like? You know, kind of right. that back and forth Vastly and different. having, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Those different sides of her. And yeah, like I would say just those are some. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. keep rambling about these, but yeah, like, I know, yeah, some. there's like an endless, like, it's easy to right? go, like, I don't know. But like, yeah, I think those are some like excellent, excellent people to like look up to in this industry. And yeah. of course, I almost want to say too, I'm um, Jim Carrey, man of my, like oh, just for like the yeah. comedy side, you're just like, ah, like it's so fun to see just yeah. different films that he's been in. And of course, I feel like so many people are like laughing hysterically at so many of them. Right. And so it's like, mm, yep. Yeah. <laughs> he's brilliant. Yep. Absolutely. Touched on Seinfeld too. So I could go on and yes. on about yes. that one too. Mm -hmm. So man, oh my. Classic. I'm in season seven right now. Yes. Just yes. <laughs> every night just. <laughs> I know most people are like Blythe like you are an old soul but you have a young heart because I feel mm. like you know like I I joke about stuff like I have just like obviously energy and mm. it's funny because on the flip side then I feel like there's just different things like obviously talking about Seinfeld people are like Blythe like Seinfeld which I mean it's such a classic <laughs> like yeah but, like I feel like most people are like really like that's like but like that would probably be like one of the number one like that oh would, yeah that's ah ooh, yep mm. <laughs> it's so good <laughs> So classically good. Yes. And it's unfortunate because you can't really repeat it. Because it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. that was, that worked for that time, you know. Yes. It, well, it almost didn't, too. <laughs> right. But uh, I was just hearing about that, too. I was fun. Um, I can't remember which late night show I was watching. But, oh, it was Conan. And Conan mm -hmm. was talking Ooh. about the guy that helped Seinfeld stay on the air. Yeah. Because they were, you know what I mean, just about to get kicked off. And same with Conan. I mean, it was the same guy. I wish I could remember the guy's name. But like that had the faith to be like no like we need this to keep going and yeah. same for conan we need him to keep going and now of course like how successful both of those things have been and so yeah. it's fun to hear again about those people who obviously stuck into their life and put their mm -hmm. their neck on the line for different people in this industry to get to be where they are it's crazy yeah right absolutely yeah have you uh listened to conan's podcast at all just out of curiosity <laughs> yeah so good. definitely yeah definitely <laughs> you ha like i always think it's funny because i'm yeah, I, of course, I mean, look up to him with the red hair. That's always something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, he's so funny. And I certainly, like I said, there's so many different comedians that I could like mm -hmm. ramble to about just because yeah. they're hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, one of those, Jim Gaffigan. I don't know if you oh, guys yeah. know him, yeah. but he's so funny. So good. And I remember um, I saw him with my parents like when I was younger. And it was so funny because when he was just like, you know you think about like his humor too and you're like wow like 
he's been able to stay like this clean comedian but yet so funny where you think yeah. about like so many comedians you know you're diving in different topics or different things that like definitely are you know getting uh, over the edge sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. but like he's been able to hit it and hit it so huge with not having to dive into that it's yeah. respectable too you're like wow like that's pretty cool yeah, he's very talented yeah and pale so he's a right. pale force <laughs> what do you do yes. with conan <laughs> The pale face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I love Jim Gaffigan's work. Yeah, I even if you get his audio book because yeah. he reads it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's fun. It's hilarious. Yeah, well, you have to. I mean, you especially being that. someone like him, like his voice is a lot of his jokes too. When he's kind of going back and forth yeah. between mm-hmm. that stuff, it's like that's really yeah, good that stuff. that special voice. Yeah. <laughs> I used to memorize a bunch of his jokes because I always thought mm-hmm. it was funny. And I, I felt like it was crazy, too, because there was a point in his career when I felt like a lot of my friends and people didn't know who he was. Right. And so I had a lot of those jokes memorized. And so I would say something and people were like, boy, did you just, oh, my gosh. I'm like, that's not mine. <laughs> like, that's Jim. Yeah. I'm like, I figured How you, do you would know, know that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I play out, like, these Seinfeld scenarios with my friend. And he yeah. hates Seinfeld, oh, no. but he loves these jokes. And I'm like, that's Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, you actually secretly like, Seinfeld yeah. you mm-hmm. just don't know it exactly <laughs> some people do that you put up yeah. a wall and they're like nope they just have like turned that yeah yeah off they're and they're stubborn brain. about it yeah but I, I love Jim Gaffigan's thing on Mr. Universe like applying to be a bouncer or something <laughs> oh it says here you were Mr. Universe <laughs> <laughs> oh man he's so good so so good he needs to come out with something new soon uh, he does he has one on uh, Amazon Prime all his stuff is on there now. I know, but I want more. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you're all. Oh, you I, I you want ran more. it down. I'm caught up and I want more. <laughs> well, That's go. the crazy thing about this time, too, yes. is like how you can watch stuff so fast. Yeah, like, yeah it's kind of a problem because there's so many. You saw the Jim Gaffigan show? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to uh, stand-up and comedians, I don't I don't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> like I will binge watch every like every single stand-up show that they have on a streaming service. Yeah, in one day, ju- right. and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, well that's great, but now there's nothing left, and they have to go on tour first before something else comes out a year later, and I don't have that much patience, <laughs> so I get I get very impatient with Time it. Time for the audio book. That's th- yeah, I'm gonna have to do that actually. I think it's like dad is fat or something. <laughs> something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like I've saw, yeah. Or why yep. is that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> so well, It's neat too when you're talking about just, I mean, like, of course, like him being in the entertainment industry, being the comedian, but yeah. then like, okay, now he's doing the voice of his audio book. And you yeah. think about it too, because I mean, so many of us like in the industry, it's like, okay, like whether it's like, okay, you're an actress, but then. You know, obviously not every actress does this or not every actor does this, but like being on that voiceover mm-hmm. spectrum too. And so yeah. it's like fun to like think about too. And I am like, I enjoy that as well. And so it's, it's interesting to think about those things that like mm-hmm. people are in and you're like, Oh, you got to kind of slide into that. Yeah. I wasn't in it before. Absolutely. Have you tried stand up? <laughs> That's, you know, on the bucket list. Like if it was something I would say, I don't think it would ever be like, Oh, I'm going to continue on and that's going to be something, but it would be fun to kind of check off and be like, I've done that. Like I yeah. want to create a routine, go up there, went through the process because I do, I find it fascinating, you mm-hmm. know, the comedians who are out there. And of course the ones that just like really hit you and you're like, that yeah. was so funny. They did that so well and so perfect. And so it's on the bucket list. You know, mm-hmm. you never know. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. that could happen. I'll let you guys know, but <laughs> certainly nothing that's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. If you were expecting it for me to go on stage, no, <laughs> not going to premiere that here on the show. Okay. <laughs> um, have you, you've done quite a bit of voiceover, I assume like being in radio yeah, and all of yeah. that. How do you enjoy that compared to acting? Well, of course, with just, like I said, even just the passion of being broadcasting, you know, silent reporting, different stuff like that. Like you're on the camera, on the screen, like you're making those emotions happen and people are able to see visually. So I really connect with that visual side of things, like with acting, of course, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's so interesting. Like, how can you make some of that stuff come across when you can't see anything? And of course, people get to have an imagination then and really get to put those pieces together from what yeah. they're getting from you. And so how, yeah, I've enjoyed that, of course, being on the other side and being like, okay, like how can I make this character come to life 
and have that persona that I don't get to show them Mm -hmm. like who what I'm doing behind the scenes to make this character come out but yeah it's been fun to even think about some of those things and different voiceover coaches too I mean having you get really involved with what that looks like what you're doing what is your body doing when you're making some of these you know voices come out of you because if you're really stagnant it's not gonna come across right and so for me that's been a fun side too is like if people could see you when you're in the room recording voiceover (laughs) that could be a series in itself because sometimes (laughs) that gets pretty entertaining (laughs) that's actually a great idea yeah that no, would be not. really funny. Yeah. I think it'd for be like a really second. funny. <laughs> for like a second. Yeah, that could yeah. be like a cool Maybe a like, sketch idea. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that'd be a cool like web series. Like the people that go in and out of these booths and like <laughs> their reactions to their direction or what they're trying to say and they're like, I don't know how to make this yeah. sound any more exciting than it like for whatever it is. Yeah. I think that'd be a cool you could ham it up a little bit. Like yeah. I think that'd be good. Definitely. Let's make it happen. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Anyway. So, Blythe, uh, when it comes to, like, auditioning, what, um, have, obviously you do, like, maybe some online stuff, too, like, mm-hmm. uh, but what, what is that like for you? Like, what's the landscape kind of look like out there for you for in, in Minnesota here? Yeah, it's been neat, and I, I would say, I guess, super grateful, you know, for some of those people who have got, helped me get in the room for some of these bigger, bigger auditions, and so, for me, when I think about it, um, of course, you know, you just as an actress you think about what does this look like and I guess if I could offer any small advice which I mean Mm -hmm. obviously there's people who could offer a million times more and have been in this industry incredibly longer than I have and so you think about what does that look like to be yourself and I think like people Mm -hmm. especially I would say actors who aren't on the broadcasting side because like I get to be myself in front of the camera every day you know what I mean or like you know how often and so for me when I think about that it, there's a kind of a disconnect and so it's like how can you be yourself yes you're going to come in and be this character but like how do you be yourself and have kind of just that e- uh, i don't know i'm um, what the word i'm trying to think of just like the ease of getting to be yourself before you're going to jump into this character because yeah. i feel like people mm. kind of get inside their head about it yeah and so that's something too i mean i think about a lot and definitely still think about you know it's not something that i feel like is like fully mastered i feel like everyone kind of you're in your right. head um but like I think that's something that I think is so important because people, it helps you kind of get that level of ease as you're coming mm-hmm. in to show them what you got. Right. That's great. Cause yeah, I, I know that a lot of people in general, you know, have a hard time with, you know, expressing yourself as you. So it, yeah. it's, <laughs> that that's, that's a, it's good that, you know, you can find that center so quickly cause that's important. I think. Um, not just in acting, but in life too. It's true. This is true. Yeah. In life, this is very true. And you think about it too when but we talk about especially it. in acting, because like if you don't know where your center is, you can get lost in that character. You don't like we talked to a stunt man about mm-hmm. finding your exit after a scene is done, or especially in an intense scene, um, something like that. So you you're done with this. It's you left it there. You know. So it's. Not like um, taking the emotion with you. Yeah, once yeah. You, once you leave, yeah, like kind of letting it go. That wasn't actually my life. Yeah, yeah. But you can still obviously express it in that way. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think that uh, if you, um, I, I, uh, I'm rambling. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any like high emotion, like high emotional? Um, roles like that before where you've had to really amp it up for for shooting this day or this weekend and it's taken like everything out of you but you have to leave that there because that's not your life and you can't let that affect you like once you like have you ever had that kind of experience before yeah I think it's interesting too when you're talking about on a film set like when you're really going into that character but I think it's interesting too because some of that stuff is happening in an audition room yeah so like sometimes they're going to put you in this really intense scene to see if you're able to to do it because that's like the heart and soul of that character Mm -hmm. and so there's so many people who go through that like you know on that little bit of toll on your body you know as you're getting really deep into that emotion and so for myself when I think about that I mean just even when you're thinking about of course like so in one of the films, sadly, I mean, I shot a few people mm-hmm. and so, you know, it, it happened. I'm um, casually. No, but, and so definitely 
when you think about obviously what that would be like like that's mm-hmm. terrifying in my personal life you yeah. know what i mean like what that would look like to be faced with that absolutely and so my character was on the run and that felt like it was her only option mm-hmm. and so when you think about getting into that mindset of what would that look like to be in that scenario mm-hmm. um of course you know you're leaving that and being like okay like wow like that obviously never happened yeah will never happen how do you just like disconnect and be like that's so crazy but right that's who that character is yes so definitely it's a weird it's a weird thing yeah. when you got to kind of take that hat off and be like okay i had to step into that mm-hmm. but nowhere near right who i am and right you know but yeah like i said for so many castings too i just think it's interesting too when you mm-hmm. see that happening for some of those stuff because you step in and you're going to be that even if it's just for that moment it yes. wasn't like you had to do take after take which obviously that's even more taxing yes but when you're just stepping in and trying to show everything that you could do because mm-hmm. you're obviously they're trying to be like yeah. okay can you do this role and to still put yourself through that because you're even more so trying to be like okay mm-hmm. i for sure could do this for you yeah. more than once <laughs> Um, if you were to be able to create your perfect role or like in your perfect genre, what would that look like? Mm. So uh, I know we talked about that Seinfeld is like not really possible to remake, Mm -hmm. but I really love, um, Elaine's character (laughs) in that. that. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. There's so many films and so many things. It's so tough to put a finger on like, this is the perfect role. Yeah. This is the perfect thing. Because hopefully, you know, every one of us hopes that there isn't just one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there absolutely. isn't just one role. We hope that there's more than one. Yes. And so, but something like that, I feel like, again, when you think about it, it's, it's not so like set on a certain something. There's so many like different areas that mm-hmm. that can go. And yeah, mm, favorites are so tough. They are. <laughs> they really are. I ask people the favorite question, but I would never be able to answer it. So I get it. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. I, I totally get that too. <laughs> no, I, I do all the time. And I think it is something when you think about too, like when you're thinking favorite and you're like, okay, like, is that my favorite? Like at this moment? Cause like too, right. like we go through kind of those things of like right now, like I'm really like, this is my jam. And <laughs> that's like, yeah. something. I yep. mean, I joke about that cause that's like chai tea at the moment for some reason. That's yeah. like my jam. Mm-hmm. I like never like i don't like coffee but like chai tea like if someone is like mm, Blythe, there's gonna be chai tea i'd be like mm, i should say hello <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah yeah like jokes about cake, about cake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the but, birthday cake yeah i hate that guy there's gonna be cake i should say hello yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it so good so no but yeah so definitely but if what's it, what's next for you yeah Yeah, so what's next so i mean so um we touched on a little bit earlier Mm -hmm. so i have um a comedy coming up here um in just a couple weeks like that should be super fun exciting and of course i mean again when we talk about some of those like deep intense roles Mm -hmm. like it's going to be fun to be on the other side of that and not having to fully get into the nitty-gritty of what those characters go through and so i'm excited for this one um but otherwise too i mean for me like with broadcasting and stuff like there'll be some of that mixed in there which is always fun and Mm -hmm. then um on the flip side too is the feature that we talked about um that's coming up so just trying to like dive in and fully get ready for that character and Mm -hmm. i think it is something that is important so they shot the first half of it first and so half of the film has been shot and so we'll kind of go back in Mm -hmm. and be Mm -hmm. doing my kind of half of the film here and it's interesting because i'll get to see that character Mm -hmm. and so kind of be because i'm playing her right (laughs) Right, so it's like how does that look to kind of match like what that looks like yeah of course i don't know that part should be really fun to kind of get to see okay what did she take with this character and how can i still now it's like what i took from that character and what i wanted to do but it's gonna have to meld right Right. okay she already did that this is already yeah part of that so how can we kind of work through that so i'm excited that'll be really cool yeah yeah well, Blythe, how can people get a hold of you? Like Ooh. if somebody wants to work Call with me, you. Call me, beat me. Or no, if it, right? <laughs> it's the main beeper number. Um, <laughs> or if they want to check out some of your work, like where can they find that? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I'm probably the most active on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So it's at Blythe the Red, <laughs> which I think, you know, pretty fitting. But um, I think it's funny too. I dive into like my name and like think – it's crazy because I never realized it when I made the account. Mm-hmm. So like my name is spelled B-L-Y-T-H-E. And then, so it looks like the, and then I go yeah. into the again. So it looks like Bly, the, the, red. If people oh, don't know funny. me, yeah. they're like, I wait, what? I'm like, I didn't either. Someone pointed out. I was like, oh, well, that's, <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah, no. Blythe and then the red. 
<laughs> but yeah no and so that <laughs> that's just a random tidbit but i would say that's like probably where most of my like stuff that i'm posting is i'm mm-hmm. um, but getting a hold of me probably email okay um my initials b at b of course Blythe. <laughs> <laughs> s and then my last name whaley at gmail but yeah, no, I don't know. I think it's right. it's crazy too when you think about it, how many mediums we have now to yes. like reach people and like get a hold of people and you're like, okay, like, mm-hmm. which which one do you want? It's which right, do, yeah, it's pretty you vast. Want to be contacted. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking the time on on your busy day to like come in and talk to us. We really appreciate you being here. Yeah. Stop! I really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Like I said the, just the fact that you do this for our industry is so awesome and incredible. So I thank you guys for that. And thank I think you. too, like think about how much time you guys are taking to like sit down with people like me and be like, okay, how can we dive into the nitty gritty? <laughs> and so I mean, maybe we should like remake this at some point. I'd love to interview you guys. We could flip the table Ooh. a little bit. So be intense. if you ever want to <laughs> do that, if you ever want to do that, let All me know. Right. Love that stuff too. Absolutely. But thank you so, so much. much. And like I said, yeah. thank. I guess if you think about it, just like when I look back on my career, there's so many people that like you could mm-hmm. think about like thanking yeah. and I um, just thank everyone who's like taking a shot on me and wanted me on their film set. Like that's so incredible and. You know, looking yeah. forward to like, what's ahead? You never know. I, none of us knew. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining in, listeners. And until next time, I'm Rahana Power. I'm Alan Tracy. And this is Bill Minnesota. <laughs>